Hallelujah. Let's go to the mountain and drink of this wondrous word of God. Amen. That God has especially for us. Amen. It's something that when we abide in the vine. Amen. That the vine of vines in us. Amen. And it continually to flow. It continually to grow. It continually to mature us into different areas within our lives where we're excited about the things of God and what God is doing and God is so wonderful that he is worthy to be praised and may his praise continually to be upon our lips amen and you know that's what I was sharing about today about the word of God and how it is so important to get into the word you know, we get into the spirit of things, and in order for us to pray and get into the spirit of things, that we need the sweetness of the Word of God, amen, to impact our lives, to make uh, changes, and to transform us into the likeness of our King, amen. He is the King of Kings, He is the Lord of Lords, and I'm telling you, there is no one like our God, amen. There's no other word but the word of God. Amen. There's no exceptions to the key of the word of God. You know, God's word is like no other source. The word of God is so alive. Amen. They're out of Hebrews. They're in chapter 4, 12. I know I'm hitting it hard right off the bat. Amen. Because I really want you to see what the Lord is speaking and saying. Uh, to our hearts and to our lives, amen, that we may grow into an understanding, that we may grow as a church, that we may um, grow with the understanding of God, that, you know what, I'm not going back, I'm not turning back, you know, I'm going to do what God has called me out to do, and you know what, I can do it because God has called me to be a doer of the word, amen. And so, as we could see here in Hebrews there in chapter 4, verse 12, when, where the Lord is speaking about that the Word of God is living and it is active, it's sharper than any double-edged sword, that it penetrates even to the dividing of our soul, those things of the spirit, our joints, our moral, amen, that it judges even the thoughts and the attitudes of our hearts. Amen. In other words, God is bigger than any booger man. Come on now. God is bigger than any double-minded of any areas where we may be double-minded. Maybe you are working on something and it seems so very hard and you're saying, Okay, Lord. I don't know how to do this or, uh, you know, what to do with this. But I believe what you've given to me is more than enough. It's promised more than enough that it will see me through and it will allow me to, to be that overcomer. Amen. And to go forward, march forward into the promises that God has blessed us with this word of God not to be double minded but you know what even when those thoughts come how are we going to slay the giant how are we going to slay the booger man well we're going to slay him through and in the word of God amen and so it's so very important because he knows every part of our joints our marrow he knows every part of our body um, that is so very important that needs to Expel the power of God. Amen. And there's no other power but the power of God. Now you can play with some other power. You can uh, gesture some other power. You know, uh, voodoo, witchcraft, tarot cards, um, uh, like sensing, uh, witch. Uh, you know, you can do all those other little things but that's not power that's not power amen that's not power because there's power in the blood of jesus amen and so it's very important that we know and we have an understanding 
where God is showing us in and through his word that he's dividing the soul he's dividing the spirit he's the dividing of the joints and of the marrow and he judges even the thoughts and the attitudes of our heart why we do what we do what we do what we do our thoughts that we're thinking are they justifying are they loving are they giving you know are they the thoughts of Christ and when we find that they're not believe me we need an increase of a dosage in God's word can I hear an amen in 1st Peter 1 23 the word says that you have been born again and it's not of a perishable seed but of imperishable that through the living and the enduring word of God you know God creates us to be um, an imperishable seed when we have been born again. And it's so funny that right now some of the plants that um, that I have uh, sown, of course, uh, they were already plants. But I didn't realize that they had carried a certain seed. And most of the time, every plant carries a seed in it or it uh, procreates uh, by the roots itself but you know sometimes we have to start in a seedling way amen and sometimes we can start in a big way amen um, that we could say hey you know what this is growing this is working um, this is protruding amen uh, this is giving forth life amen hallelujah and so, however the Lord wants to begin, know that God has begun that work in you. And God's not finished with that work inside of you. Amen. And so, He's called us to be like-minded in the things of Christ. You know, Christ is still working. You could say, hey, He's not here among us. He's not eating tacos and burgers. <laughs> you know, just like when He was eating with the with the disciples when he was eating the fish but you know what he is here among us and he is still working among us he has given us the power the anointing the breaks the yokes of bondages of the holy spirit hallelujah if anybody's gonna judge let, let god be my judge amen because every man is to be called a liar but yet god is not a liar He's the faithful one. He's the truth, you know, and he's allowed us to be examples of those very same things. And, you know, I can say I'm not perfect. I am not perfect. I am still a project that God is working on. Praise be the glory to God. And I know I, as long as we're here on earth, you know what? I'm still going to be that project because I need to learn more about love, I need to learn about, more about doing, I need to learn more about serving, I need to learn more about giving, you know, there's all aspects until God says that, be perfect, because I am perfect, and, you know, we've always heard it this way, well, you're not perfect, well, we got to believe and understand and know up into where we are, okay, that God has filled us with himself, and because God lives within us, you know, I'm not perfect, but God's perfect inside of me. He's working out that perfect, I don't know if there's that word of a perfect nest, but I like the nest because it just adds so much more, amen, the nest, the nest, you know, it's just like the crema, the crema, the crema, the cream of the crop, amen, and so that means just so much more of who God is inside of us and especially when we become Christ like minded amen there out of the book of James there in chapter 118 see God decided to give us life through the word of truth so that we may be the most important of all the things that he has made and I love that when I read this scripture amen because God decided to give us life. You know, he breathed the breath of life when we become born again. Amen. Not when our mother gave us birth. 
Because even then, people struggled to breathe. Are you with me, church? They struggle to breathe in our natural sense. But when we become spiritual beings and our spirit is awakened and alarmed, you know, he come to give us life through the word of truth. In other words, what God spoke, it is not a lie. It's a truth over your life that he knew you even while yet you were in your mother's womb. He foreknew you even before the foundations of the world. And I'm telling you, your name is written on God's palm. Amen. He knows you because you are the apple of God's eye. Can I hear an amen? And so we ought to be the most important of all things that he has made. You know, and I say that that is important because he has made us in his perfect image. Once again, I don't want to climb up that tree again about perfectness. But when we are in him, he sees himself inside of us. And God is perfect. You know, he fills us to testify of the truth of who he is. Because that's what he created us. He created, you know, us. And there's a form of a, um, scripture. And I believe it's in the book of Psalms where he says, that he has made us to be as the lower gods. The little gods. Amen. And because. Well how can you say that sister Sheena? Well he's made us. In his image. Amen. And so. There's power exuding out of our lives. You know. There's energy that. Zeus is out of our lives. But that's the power of God. That's the anointing of God. What does he want you to do with that power amen that power that people so called you know that energy no that's power of the Lord now the enemy is going to make up some power okay but once again it's nothing compared to that wonder working power of the Lord Jesus Christ I want you to go back and look at the miracles I want you to go back and look at the signs I want you to go back and and look at the miracles and the signs and all the wonders that God did with that wonder working power he opened the Red Sea he brought hands withered hands back into life I'm telling you he has brought back the dead are you with me, church? This is the signs. These are the wonders. These are the powers that God is working as well in our lives. Why? Because we are Christ-like minded. And we can do what God says that we can do. We can go where God says where we can go. And, you know, we can be who God says that we can be and so I'm going to wrap this up with this last scripture there at a Job 23 verse 12 well we have to know without a shadow of doubt amen that I have treasured these words of God's mouth more than my own daily bread amen why is that church see God wants us to endowment of a spiritual nourishment endowment to fulfill our purpose that God has called us to do. You know, this morning when, when I was reading this scripture, it brought me back to my puppy. Uh, my, I have a dog. Her name is Missy. And she's a beautiful pup. Maybe I can send a picture every now and then. Let you know what Miss Missy's about. But I'm telling you, um, this morning, she didn't come to me she, like she regularly does. And I was like, hmm, why? Usually she's just licking up the leg and, you know, just going with me everywhere until literally I pet her on the head and then she's able to go about her day. Well, this morning, she was just off her schedule, I'm telling you. And she was just doing what she wanted to do. 
and I that made me wanted to pay more attention to her okay and I paid intently to her and she was just uh, you know just doing her own thing you know and I was just looking at her and I was just looking at her and you know what it just made me look towards her food and when I looked to her food I said oh my gosh she is so upset because I haven't put food up in, <laughs> up in her tray and I said okay well I'm gonna freshen her up I want to spray her down come on now and boy as soon as she see me get up she said okay I'm gonna have to come to mama because I know mama's mama's gonna meet my needs and when I went to her she didn't like when I sprayed her down and, and given her a fresh doggy spray but I'm telling you she was so happy I started turning that corner and boy she was just so happy I gave her her food oh she got more happy I gave her fresh water I mean she was having a field day um, after all of that and so you know I'm not saying that that our lifestyles are like dogs but what I'm saying is that we need to come to the father eat and drink of his word get that nourishment for our bones so that we can live out the daily promise that God has for our lives amen so with that church we're gonna pray and I'm inviting you if you are in the area maybe you can even drive an hour I don't know those of you have more than enough maybe you just want to fly in amen but I'm telling you that we are doing our home ministries, church and communities, reaching out to the communities, being a blessing to the community. And you know, God is shifting in the spirits. God is speaking even unto us each and every day, each and every time. The heavens are open. We've been getting rain here. But you know what? God makes that time vulnerable and open to where we can give out the word of God. God is holding back the storms. Amen so that people can hear the word and come to dream more of the word of God. Amen. And so church, be established upon the rock. Amen. As we invite you, publish these things. Amen. Be the evangelist um, to work out the things that God has called you to do. And Jesus, mighty name, work the force of the cross jesus our lord jesus our savior jesus our redeemer jesus our friend in jesus mighty name we thank you lord for all that what you've done and all that you're going to do father we stand upon your promises we know lord that you are god and that you are working in our lives as never before father we stand upon the rock and the cross Lord and everything that you have purposely done for us that we may live those victory lives father thank you for the word of God thank you for the manna thank you for the knowledge thank you for the wisdom thank you for the revelation of your word and turning our lives around that we will never be the same again in Jesus mighty name church thank you for soaring high with me here today thank you for loving uh, on God with me here today, amen, as we continually to soar higher. Tina Vieska, a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, the friend, God is my best friend, amen, and honoring and glorifying the Lord. May you have a blessed, continually week in the Lord. God bless you, church, amen.